Hello again, I'm Ray, G4 and SJ. Look at that, just got a mag mount. <laughs> I'll stick that on the car. That's for uh, 70 cents and two meters. Got the aerial somewhere. Uh, that wasn't cheap. Right, I want to talk today about the Anytone, I've had to write it down, AT778VU, Alpha Tango 778 Victor Uniform, Anytone, Chinese radio, transceiver, um, 70 centimetres and 2 metres, uh, also covers, well everything, was it 136 to 174 megs, transmit and receive, and uh, what is it, for? is it 400 to 440, I can't remember, look that up, <laughs> I'll look that up in a minute. Um, yeah, an amazing radio, transmit and receive, I say on all frequencies, so it is opened up. Um, I made a quick video, I haven't got it on the bench, Normally, I show things on the bench here in the workshop. The trouble is, I've installed it where it's going. Okay, uh, it's not it's not in my shack um, because I've, I I don't have a shack as as such anymore. I've got the workshop, but I don't have radios out here because what happens if I've got a radio up here somewhere as I used to have under the shelf? Someone would call. I'd grab the mic. Two hours would go by, and I haven't done any work. That's what I'm restoring at the moment, or about to restore. Ever ready Sky King radio. So of course I'd, I'd chat to people all day long on the radio and not get any work done. Anyway, I made a quick video. Have a look at the video, and uh, I'll talk about it a bit more afterwards. All right, here's the radio on um, on scan mode. That's just scanning the various channels I put in. You can, uh, if I just stop that for a minute, uh, you can see there we are. I put in there GB3. IW, that's the Isle of Wight repeater. Um, GV3WO, that's the Worthing uh, 70SM's repeater. GB3HG, that's Hastings repeater. And some of them I've just, just put the frequency because there's not much to say about it. That's channel 72 VHF Marine, 77 Marine. I listen to the fishing boats having a chat sometimes. So that's it, that's the various channels I put in. Uh, I haven't got many at the moment. But um, there, there's the microphone, if I can show you that. Uh, it's not too close, is it? Um, you've got loads of buttons on there, and what I do find is, it's very easy to, you know, when you, when you go to transmit, you've got to press the PTT. You're also pressing other buttons there, but you can lock that lot out. You can lock all the buttons out, which is pretty useful. Um, there's so much to say about this radio, I don't really know where to start. I'm not going to tell you how to program it, because that would just take too long. There are loads of uh, videos around about programming the radio. So there really is no point in me going through everything. There's a dual watch, so you can um, you know, mon monitor a, a, a channel, whatever channel it is you want monitor that in case someone pops up on that while you're on another channel where you know what dual watch is. Uh, also the the aerial socket on the back is an SO239 okay yeah, for a PL259 plug um, and the only things on the back are the extension speaker socket the 12 volt cable and the aerial socket uh, nothing sort of complicated about that. Uh, the coverage let me, I just I don't know I better look this up at night Yes, 136 to 174 megs and 400 to 490 uh, megs UHF, 400 to 490. Uh, I don't know, I forgot that. That's old age. Put that down to old age. Um, so I've made some notes here. What does this say? I can't read my notes, isn't it? Awful. Yeah, this, so this, let's go back to the video, but this isn't a review on the radio, all right? This is just sort of showing you this just... You might be thinking, oh, what radio shall I get? You know, I've heard of this one. Is it any good? So uh, let's go back to the video. One or two features that are quite useful. This one, press that. All right, turns the squelch off. So if you think there's a weak signal there, you can just press that and get rid of the squelch. Uh, the volume, because this is a multi-function control here. Uh, if you press P6, you've got volume. So you've got two, three, four. Okay. Um, Read the book on it. There's all sorts of information in the book, all sorts of good stuff. It's, uh, what is the power on the transmitter? You've got power levels, 5, 15 and 25 watts, which is useful. I keep it mainly on 5 watts. I don't do any 
long distance DX stuff. So that's, uh, that's useful to be able to go down to five watts. It does get very warm if you're going to use it on high power for a long time. The case does get very warm. It's a kind of, what is it, die cast? It's not cast iron, is it? Cast alloy or something. And the whole case, the whole cabinet of the thing is a heat sink. And it does get very warm. You may have wondered what the other <coughs> things were I typed in there, like Knighton. Knighton is channel 16. Uh, years ago, when I was a boy, I used to listen to Knighton Radio on the Isle of Wight, channel 16 uh, VHF. Um, I say when I was a boy, it was, it was, no, when I was a boy, I listened to Knighton Radio on 2182 kilohertz. Um, so it's now Solent Coast Guard. Well, you can only type up to five characters. So I put Knighton. I know what that means. <laughs> okay. And Beach and Nurse, they're nicknames for a couple of friends of mine. Don't worry about Beach and Nurse. <laughs> um, that's just something I probed in, programmed in. But you can, it's really useful to be able to type in what you want rather than just the frequency. I mean, on two meters, for example, you could type in S20, you know, S21, the channel names. Mind you, they've changed recently. Why does everything have to change? So yeah, that's really useful to be able to type in and label things, especially the repeaters. Uh, that's really handy. Um, yeah, as I said in the video clip, I'm not gonna go through uh, all the, the menu functions, it would take hours. But uh, you know, the book is pretty comprehensive. Parts of it, you know, a little bit difficult to understand. I mean, don't, don't forget, it's been translated from kind of Chinese to English, and some of the translation gets a bit lost or mixed up here and there. But uh, it's not difficult, and there are some excellent videos on YouTube um, to do with you know, setting it all up. The price, I couldn't believe this under a hundred pounds, okay? 100 GB pounds, less than that, 99 in fact. You look at that, when I first saw that, I thought, hang on a minute, you know, 99 pounds for a two meter 70 cent radio and marine and everything else. I thought, no, 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 this can't be any good. A friend of mine's got one and he, we were having a chat on the air and he said, oh, they're really good. You know, there's nothing wrong with it. It's absolutely excellent. I read around forums on the internet and watched videos in the end, I bought one, and I have to agree with everyone. They are amazing radios. They really are incredible. So, you know the aerial I bought? Did you see my aerial video? This is it, the Watson uh, W50. I put that up recently. That was, I think that was £63. I bought some fat coax. Sorry, RG213. <laughs> you know what I mean, fat low-loss coax. That was about 20 quid. Basically, for just under 200 pounds, you can get this radio, right? The Watson Aerial, the coax. You're all set up to go. All you need is a power supply. That's the only thing you know, isn't in that price. 12 volt power supply. I think they recommended about 12 amps. The radio is fused at 10 amps. So you will need a, a power supply that does at least 12 amps. Um, and that's it. So you're on the air, VHF and UHF. Assuming you've got a license, that is. Goodness me, what am I suggesting you transmit without a license? Um, yeah, no, seriously, uh, you know, for less than two hundred pounds, you've got a really good setup on the air, so you can't go wrong with that. It does have a, an internal speaker, a little speaker built in underneath, which uh, you know, which is fine. Plenty of audio, plenty of volume there, but I like extension speakers, an external one, because I do like a bit of. Uh, a, a bit of audio spectrum, you know, I don't want it all in the middle like an old fashioned telephone. I mean, it's perfectly all right, the internal one, but uh, a, a larger uh, extension speaker does make it, it's, it's easier on the ear, I think, the audio quality with a, a extension speaker. Little 3.5 mil jack socket on the back, uh, the mono type, that's all you need, and an extension speaker of some sort, eight ohms, get that right. Um, so yeah, th th that's it. I mean, I, I've, you may have noticed in that video clip, mine's screwed, to, uh, you got, I've got the mobile mounting bracket underneath it and it's screwed on top of a bit of wood <laughs> at the moment. Um, cause where it is, uh, it's, um, it's next to my, next to the sofa in the dining room. <laughs> okay. That's where I spend a lot of time in the winter. I got the coal fire going in the dining room and listen to some music. So I've got the radio there in the summer. We open the patio doors and uh, you know, I sit on the sofa, got the garden to look at, and I've got the radio there. 
as I said, I, I daren't put it out here. I wouldn't even get this video done. I'll be playing on the radio. <laughs> Happy days. So there it is. Yeah, there's not much else to say about it. It's, it's well built. Uh, it's a good price. As I say, for under 200 quid, you've got the whole setup. So if you're a newbie to amateur radio, I know there are a lot of people coming into the hobby. Um, this sort of thing, if you've got a couple of hundred pounds, this will get you on the air with a decent signal, you know, depending on the height of the area, of course. The base of mine is only 14 feet above the ground. And from here, Worthing in West Sussex, UK, I'm getting into the Isle of Wight repeater. Someone said to me on there, fully quietening. So that can't be bad. Hastings repeater's off at the moment. Worthing one's only half a mile away. So I'm pretty, pretty strong into that one. Um, and Simplex, I've had a go on Simplex channels, VHF and UHF. Really good results. Good audio reports as well. P several people have said good audio quality. Sounds really nice. That's important. Okay, I think that's it. As I say, I'm Ray, G4NSJ. This is my radio workshop where I restore radios. You've probably seen other videos about that. Oh, just before I go, I found the aerial there. I just bought this the other day. That's nice, isn't it? That's uh, 70 SEMS and uh, two meters. What is it? It's a half wave on two meters. I think it's a, I forget what it is on 70 SEMS, about three, five, eight, no, whatever it is, wave something or other. Rather nice, PR259. So that will just, just go into the mag mount like that. There we are. Rather nice. So I'm not going to use my the you know, my new radio in the car because uh, I don't know what it is with modern cars. Grey plastic dashboard, nowhere to put anything. Or in the old days, again when I was a boy, <laughs> with cars you had places to put stuff you know, under the dashboard. You could screw your radios under the dashboard and stuff. You know there, there was places to put things. There is nowhere now. So what I'm going to use in the car is my little handheld uh, radio. I'm uh, just going to bring this into an adapter, have the handheld thing between the seats. I've got a plug-in mic. Uh, I'll clip the mic up here, can't I? I look like a right nerd driving along. <laughs> there we are. All good fun. Thanks for watching as always. Uh, look out for the next video and I shall see you next time. Bye-bye for now.